My last lockdown edition video was a little bit sad and negative, and that's not why you're here. So let's get to something much more interesting and far more positive. Hey everyone, welcome to Roads of Oz. My name is Matt and on this episode, we're actually going to look back at an old episode and that was the five things that suck about the Motor Goodsy Grisso. Now to date, that has been my most disliked video and I can understand why there's a lot of Grisso fans out there. I really did struggle to find, think, to find five things I didn't like about the bike. So instead of whinging about it, I thought, let's look at the things we can improve. Now, one of those... One of the things we can't improve is uh, the tank distance, and in all honesty, 200 and 230 k's, by the time you've done that, it's, all, it's always nice to stop, get off the bike for a bit anyway, so not really a major issue unless you're doing a massive amount of kilometres. If you are after a bike that's doing massive kilometres, you're probably better off going for something with a larger tank, uh, like the Stelvio that's got a 30-odd litre tank and can just eat the miles. But point number five I made was actually a whinge at Motor Goods itself for not bringing out a bike that would entice me to want to upgrade the Grisso or more importantly a bike more for your fans. I know a lot of Motor Goods owners that own a Le Mans from the original right through to the Mark V and whenever they ride the newer range of Motor Goods, their biggest complaint is that it's not overly inspiring especially the V7 range. Now I'm aware they've recently upped the engine size to 850cc but in my video, I actually said, hey, Matt of Goods, you really need to get a gentleman's sports bike. And what I meant by that, more upright, more comfy. Didn't need to be as fast as like your current crotch rockets, but definitely need to give some sort of sporting feel to it. Now, I can tell you now, Matt of Goods, doesn't give a crap about my channel. I'm tiny. But what it looks like they've done is they've actually paid attention to the market. And just recently, there's been some spy photos come out showing you the... There, uh, it's a thousand cc, what appears to be a thousand cc Motor Guzzi motorcycle, and it's got all the Motor Guzzi fraternity um, buzzing. Um, some like it, some don't. Me, I'm in the category I really like it. Now, I think Motor Guzzi's got taken the right step. It's no use trying to produce a full on sports bike. Piaggio Group, they're part of Piaggio Group, and Aprilia is their sports bike arm, and it'd be no good Motor Guzzi trying to compete on the sports bike market. But this one looks like a cross between a Tourer and a bit of a sports bike um, mix. And I think that's perfect, especially for the target market I believe it's aimed at. And that's guys like myself, 40 years and above. This bike should appeal. It looks like it's more upright. It does have some sporty features. Now, problem when you're trying to make something comfortable and look sporty, you get this mismatch. My favorite motor goods is normally low and sleek, like the Le Mans range, the Grisso. This one looks a bit more upright, which is probably better for the target market I think Motor Goods is going for. And that market is guys that actually own older Motor Goodsies and want a modern one in their shed that they can just take that out whenever and not worry about it, clock up a heap of miles and it's and enjoy their older bikes when they feel like riding it. And for that reason, I'm very excited. Is it a bike I'd buy? I don't know. Until I actually ride one and see one in the flesh, it's hard to appreciate. In most cases, until you actually see the bike in the flesh, it's not going to seal the deal for you. And that's my case as well. Fingers crossed that this is going to be an absolute cracker of the bike. And I'm feeling quite positive that this bike's going to knock it out of the park and be exactly the bike Motor Goodsy needs. And I'm hoping it's going to be a massive sales success for them. One of my other complaints was the crappy toolkit that actually come with the Motor Goodsy Grisso. Being a premium bike, I expected a premium toolkit. But what I can do is actually start accumulating a decent toolkit. And recently I just purchased this Wera brand. From what I can see, they're a good quality tool. And there's that many different variations of this compact toolkit. Now, it's not the smallest toolkit. Don't get me wrong, it's not going to fit in the Grisso itself. But if you look at my, you look at the palm of my hand, it's, um, there we go, that's better. It fits in it quite well. It's going to pack well in a pannier or even um, my Ventura bag. It, sh it should fit in this quite nicely without taking up a massive amount of space. Now, let's have a quick look in it and I'll tell you why I went for this one. All right, so let's open her up, have a quick look in it. Now, it's quite good. It's got the Torx bits here, your flat blades, your various Phillips head blades here, 
your three eight ratchets from eight through to 19 mil, an extension piece, a shorter extension bar, and an adapter for all your Torx bits, etc. So the ratchet itself, um, you can adjust the angle so it can act like a screwdriver. Push it up, that will accept the head, and that will just take any Torx bit. Pull that down, pull it forward, and that's going nowhere. You adjust the angle slightly on it, lock it in 90 degrees, maybe close to 45 degrees, and nice and straight. To release it, you just hold that in, our off she comes, and to get that back to its normal setting, just hold it, pull it down, and you're in place, it locks in place like that. So, quite good. So, overall, um, quite a handy little toolkit. That should be enough to get you through in most cases. Don't take my word for it, check it out yourself. There's all different brands around. For the price it is, uh, by the time you bought a, a ratchet set, screwdrivers, and a nice fold down toolkit, you will have that $300 mark anyway. So what does it cost you ask? Well, I've seen it here in Australia for around $300 and way too much. Get online and look, I'm a big fan of supporting local businesses, but I found this on Amazon for $180 and that included delivery. Now, I don't mind if it's 10, 20 bucks difference, happy to support local markets. When there's a 30 to 40% difference in price, I'm gonna go with the cheaper option and the money I save I'll spend on other products in Australia. This is a German made product, so if you go on the wearer site, you'll go down an absolute rabbit hole of all these various size toolkits. They're all quite compact. My advice is, is find the one that best suits you. So have a look for it on your bike. Make a note of um, all the tools you might need and then find the toolkit that best suits your needs. It might not cover 100%, but if you can get up to that 80%, that will be that will be a start. So who do I recommend this toolkit for? Well, if you ride a motorcycle, I recommend it for you. For the simple fact, even if you're not technically inclined or you've got hands like feet like I do, it's good to carry tools. It's good to contribute um, to fixing a problem. If you break down, even if you can't fix the problem, someone else might be able to fix it. And if you've got the tools, you're helping contribute, especially on a group ride. Everyone should have something to contribute to that group ride, whether it be tools, first aid, knowledge, whatever it is, every bit helps. So you've got tools, people are more likely to help you. Lost count of how long we've been locked down for. Recently, I had my second jab and also, you would have seen on Instagram, I actually had a biopsy taken on my nose. Each year, I go to the, I go to the Royal Prince Alfred Melanoma Clinic. Because my skin type is such a high risk, I have to get it checked once a year. And I've been doing so since I was eight. If you ever see me in person, look at the back of my neck. It looks like someone's got a black paint gone splot on the back of my neck. They've, I've had them since I was eight and it gets every doctor's attention. So naturally, I have to get them checked every year. So far, so good. I've only ever had one melanoma and that was on the arm and I documented it, but it was just too gruesome to share. Anyway, Pretty much what I'm saying is, if you've got a specialist appointment, make sure you get there. Whatever health issues we have, the earlier they're diagnosed, the more likelihood of um, successfully treating them. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, please like, share. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next vid.